Okay, so this time we are going to look at problems, the two-point problems. So let's take a look at the first two-point problem. And it says that a baker takes two hours to make 110 cookies. How many cookies can he make in three and a half hours? Something that I really need you to see is that is that, that two hours and 110 cookies belong together. It goes hand in hand, guys. Okay, so um, it says to fill in the proportion. A proportion is just when you have a fraction equal to another fraction. And then we're going to solve using scaling or cross products. So, first of all, we've got to fill in our proportion. So, hours. Notice it told us two hours, so I'm going to put that up top and 110 cookies. I'm going to put that on the bottom. Now, I need you to notice um, that on the right-hand side, I've lined up my units. Notice that hours is lined up with hours. That's important. So that's another reason why it's important to um, label our our numbers with words so we'll really understand what we're doing. Um, notice on the bottom I have cookies lined up with cookies. It's very important that you are lining up those units. Okay, so moving on, it says how many cookies can he make in three and a half hours? There are several ways to approach that. I know that three and a half is equal to the decimal three decimal five. And I think that for this particular problem, although I'm not sure, I think using a decimal will be easier for me. Let me give that some thought. Oh, you know what guys, I just made a mistake. Um, I want you to look at where I put three decimal five. I put three decimal five for cookies, and that's not correct. Three and a half is the amount of hours. So um, when you're writing, just make sure you're putting things in the correct place. As you can see, teachers make mistakes too. There's a lot of noise out in the hallway, so it's kind of distracting me. Um, so I need you to see that we could use scaling or cross product. I'm going to use scaling here, honestly. Um, I know that if I take two and I multiply two by 55, that gives me 110. So that's the same thing I'm gonna do on the other side. I'm gonna take that three decimal five, I'm gonna multiply it by 55, and that'll give me my answer. So, let me erase this over here and let's do some multiplication work. So I have 55 times 3 decimal 5. I know that 5 times 5 is 25. I'm going to write down my 5, carry my 2. I know that 5 times 5 is 25 plus 2 is 27. Okay, now I am going to annex a zero or write a zero. I know three times five is 15. Write down my five, carry my one. I need three times five is 15 plus one is 16. Now I've got to add those together. Five plus zero is five. 7 plus 5 is 12. Write down my 2. Carry my 1. 1 plus 2 plus 6 is 9. And then I'm going to write my 1. Now, I need to count how many numbers are to the right of a decimal. Okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to move that decimal one space. So I now have the answer that in 3.5 hours, the baker can bake 192 and a half 
That's what that point five means, cookies. That would be my answer. All right. Let's look at the next one. And guys, I'm going to go ahead and clear the page. My page is kind of messy, so I'm just going to clear my page here. The next problem says that a bicycle travels 18 miles in two hours. How long will it take the bicycle to travel 21, and it should say miles? Fill in the proportion below. Remember, a proportion is just where you have a fraction equal to another fraction. And then we have to solve using scaling across products. So I'm going to go ahead and fill things in. I need you to remember that this 18 miles and that two hours are go hand in hand. Okay, that's why I'm putting them on the same side. That 18 miles corresponds to the two hours. And then on the other side, they ask, um, how long does it take the bike to go 21 miles? And remember I told you we had to line up our units. Notice up top I have miles lined up with miles. That's important. And then on the bottom, I have hours lined up with hours. So anyway, my 21 miles is going to go on the top, which is right here. And the value I'm trying to find is this value right here. So um, I am going to use scaling. I know that to go from 18 to 2, if I take 18 and divide it by 9, that gives me 2. So I need to take 21 and divide it by 9. And there are several ways to do that. Um, I could write the improper fraction. Twenty-one divided by nine, which is just like this. But here's the thing with that improper fraction. That fraction needs to be simplified, okay? Because you can divide that twenty-one by three, and you can also divide nine by three. When we simplify, we are just making our numbers smaller and more comprehensible. Twenty-one divided by three is seven and nine divided by three is three. So as an improper fraction, we could write, if we wanted to, seven thirds of an hour, okay? Um, as a mixed number, I could take that seven and divide it by three, seven, sorry, three can go into seven two times, two times three is six, seven minus six is one. And here is where um, we have a remainder of one. I just highlighted it yellow. So I can write the remainder of one, but how many did we start with, guys? We started with three. So it'd be two and a third. So I need you to see that seven thirds of an hour is the same thing as two and a third hours. Let me draw that for you because I really need us to understand fractions. Um, part of what we're supposed to learn in the eighth grade is how to work with rational numbers. And rational numbers is any number that can be represented with a fraction. So when you leave seventh grade, um, the state of North Carolina fully expects you to be able to work to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions, decimals, and whole numbers. So anyway, I'm gonna draw a pizza here, okay? Actually, I'm going to draw more than one pizza. 
And because my denominator, that's the number on the bottom, is a 3, I'm going to divide each of these pizzas into three equal parts. And guys, I know my division is not perfect. Um, pretend like it is, okay? So I need to show you something. So if we look at the fraction 7 thirds, which is right here, that means we have seven slices. I'm going to call color seven slices. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Do you notice that I just colored seven slices out of three? Oopsies. There it goes. Seven slices out of three. We represent that with the fraction seven thirds. But I also need you to look closely at the drawing that I just drew. Do you notice that here we have one whole pizza colored? And then right beside it, we have one more whole pizza colored. And then to the right, we only have one slice out of three colored, which we represent with the fraction of third. So all together, we have two whole pizzas and one slice out of three. So that's where we get the mixed number two and one third. So anyway, I need you to see that seven thirds is the same thing, guys, as two and one third. That's like, um, I tell my kids here in class, my kids in class call me Miss Brown. My, the fellow teachers here um, call me Tiffany because that's my first name. But yet my close family and friends call me Tiff, right? So just because you say Miss Brown or Tiffany or Tiff, are you referring to a different person? No, it's I'm all the same person. It's all the same thing. It's the same thing with the fractions here. We have seven thirds. Oopsies. We have seven thirds. which is the same thing as two and a third. Yes, they look different, but they're the same thing. They're just nicknames for the same value. And quite frankly, we could represent that as a decimal too. As a decimal is two decimal three with a bar over it. That bar means that three is going to repeat forever. Um, one more thing I need to talk to you guys about. So notice our answer is two and a third hours, right? Well, I need you to be able to answer in terms of like hours and minutes as well, okay? So again, it's two and a third. I need us to think about this. So the two, if we're talking about hours, would represent two hours. And, but here's my question for you. What do we do with that one-third? And here's where we have to know a little bit about time. So I'm going to try to draw a clock. And so we have 12 right here. And we have 3 and 6 and 9. And then let me put the numbers in between. 1 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Okay, so I'm going to take this clock and I'm going to imaginarily divide it into three equal sections.
Okay, so we have two and a third. We have a third of an hour. So that would be one out of three, right? I divided my clock into three equal sections and one out of three represents what I just shaded um, yellow. So how many minutes would that be? Let's count. So if I start at my 12, that's going to be five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So notice that 20 minutes is equal to one third of an hour. Therefore, if I had asked you to answer this question in hours and minutes, your answer would be two hours and 20 minutes. Okay, but that's only if I had asked you to answer in hours and minutes, which I didn't. So um, any of these answers, seven thirds, two and a third, or two decimal three bar would be correct. Right, let's clear our page and go to the next one. Okay, so the next one says a basketball player made 54 free throws in three minutes. How many free throws does he make per minute? So anytime you see something that asks how many per minute, that means just one minute, or how many per pound, or how many per hour, that means just one. And to figure that out, we are going to find the unit rate, and all we have to do really is divide. If they make 54 in three minutes, if we take that 54 and divide it by three, three can go into five one time. One times three is three. Subtract out, that's 20, and then bring down the four. So three can go into 24 eight times. Eight times three is 24. Subtract out, that's zero, and we're done. So to answer the question, make sure you answer the question, he can make, or she, 18 free throws per minute. Okay, and that would be your answer there. And I'm going to clear our board and we're going to go to the next problem. The next problem says a three pound bag of flour costs $2.52. What is the price per pound? Again, that's just asking for a unit rate. And to find a unit rate, we're gonna to have to do a little bit of division. A unit rate, remember, is a rate for the denominator of one. So we are going to have to do some division. And I'm going to put the $2.52 on the inside and the three on the outside. Okay, so three um, goes into two zero times, all right? Zero times three is three. And guys, I forgot to do something already. By the way, zero times three is zero, not three. And I forgot to do something. I've got to bring that decimal up, and I should have done that before I started to divide. Um, anyway, two minus zero is two. Bring down the five. Three can go into 25 eight times. Eight times three is 24. 25 minus 24 is 1. Bring down the 2. 3 can go into 12 4 times. 4 times 3 is 12. And we're done. Okay, so don't forget to answer the question. The, an the answer is that um, this cost, the flower cost, 84 cents per pound. All righty, guys. All right, I'm going to stop the video here because it's getting long, and I'll come back with a bottom two. Bye. Oopsies. Bye.
know how to get him. 